and uh, we'll uh, continue with uh, Anna Maria Merico. Uh, Anna Maria Merico uh, had a biology background, but with a large experience in uh, in uh, patent and technology transfer. And now she is, she is the head of technology transfer of uh, Teleton Foundation, which is probably the, the larger private foundation that uh, uh, finance research uh, in, in medical area in Italy and has a very important track record in uh, uh, technology transfer. So please, uh, um, Anna Maria. So thank you so much. I think we have a video uh, just to introduce Fondazione Teleton. I think this is the best way to do that. And if not... <laughs> Teleton si occupa di genetica specialmente, ha un'ottima organizzazione che io conosco da tempo, io penso che questa sia una buona amministrazione. So thank you so much for this, for allowing this video presentation. So I think this is, sorry, it was in Italian. Um, we are actually a major Italian charity. And I think this is really the best way to share with you uh, the, let's say, inspiration that really guides our work. Um, and when I say our, uh, of course, I, I mean also all the scientists that actually um, have It doesn't work. Okay, thank you. So, um, all the scientists that actually um, shared with us uh, our big vision. Um, I'm very proud. So, these are the numbers of a, uh, let's say, 30 year career of Teleton. I'm very proud of this number. Uh, we, we have been able actually to involve uh, more than 1,600 scientists in this big project. 
But what I really would like to highlight is that the success and the achievement of Teleton are really um, the result uh, uh, of the work uh, of a broad uh, team, uh, broad in terms of uh, not only number of people, uh, but in terms of expertise uh, and in terms uh, um, of efforts. And uh, um, I think that all these people really are um, guided by a unique vision, a sole vision that is to really convert uh, the results of the research into novel therapies for patients. So I think that uh, um, also after all the presentation, Okay, so I think I understood the trick. Okay, <laughs> so I don't really I don't have to to explain why uh, we we want and we need to team uh, with industry and with investors. Um, yesterday, someone asked if there is any specific uh, uh, reason or parameters we have to take into consideration to choose uh, between industrial partnership and startups. Actually, of course, there are differences. There is not a, a, a single, a, a specific rule. I would say that in industrial partnership, of course, the pharma has all the expertise and machinery um, to get to the market, but at the same time, your project uh, will simply compete uh, with the uh, big pipeline of the pharmaceutical uh, uh, company. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, I would say also that the scientists may have, uh, let's say, um, less control, uh, may have less opportunity to influence uh, how the, 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 the research can actually progress uh, within the industry, when the industry takes over uh, the, the, the program. Whereas the startup, of course, has to do a lot of effort uh, actually to, um, uh, to, to uh, bring uh, all the expertise and collect all the money that is actually needed to progress, but at the same time, all these efforts, all these competencies are really focused on your technology and on the products <laughs> that, of course, the startup has to develop and uh, in that respect uh, in the early uh, stages uh, uh, for sure scientists can really influence a little bit more how the, the science uh, and how the research uh, can actually advance within the company but having said that I think that Teleton is a let's say unique example uh, in that uh, we actually operate in a very very challenging field which is the field of genetic diseases um, and for this reason, monogenic diseases are mostly rare. So for this reason, uh, actually, we had to implement um, a number of competencies and also infrastructures that maybe are not that common uh, in academia and for sure not that common in, um, in the charity uh, world. Um, I mentioned here in this, in this slide uh, drug development competencies, uh, regulatory affairs, clinical operations to be able to, for instance, conduct multicentric uh, uh, clinical trials. And also, as uh, uh, Luigi Naldini yesterday, okay, uh, yesterday pointed out, uh, we also created an infrastructure, in particular at TGET, uh, um, really uh, to um, support the, uh, the risking phases of, uh, of projects. And uh, we are doing that uh, um, not only supporting uh, uh, the, the advancement of the research, but also taking care of the quality of the data that are generated. So through a process development lab, through a GLP certified laboratories. Uh, yesterday, Professor Maldini already described this uh, through a clinical trial office, but also investing uh, um, you know, a, a big amount of money in the manufacturing, in terms of GMP manufacturing. All this is very relevant in terms of accelerating uh, uh, the drug uh, development, in terms of uh, um, being able uh, to provide to your industrial partner 
data and support uh, that the industrial partner will be really able uh, to use uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in filing for the marketing authorization, so in the final dossier. Um, of course, this is, none of these actions are typical of a charity, as I was saying, but I would like also to highlight one more, one more aspect, which is uh, you know, more broadly uh, available and also to the scientists. Actually, in, in our model, technology transfer activities really starts uh, at the very, very beginning of a project, so much earlier than the moment uh, in which we have in our hands uh, good results, uh, much earlier than the moment we can really um, talk with the partners uh, about uh, the appealing uh, uh, results that you have achieved and uh, talk about next steps. So uh, I, the, the, the first message I would like to share with you is that one, one partnership that the scientists can really build easily built and at the very beginning of their career is the partnership with the technology transfer office. So the technology transfer person, your person, should be a sort of confident or uh, if you're not that romantic, a sort of consultant, let's say, uh, with whom you really can uh, share and discuss your project. Of course, this is not a discussion in terms of scientific discussion but it is more about uh, the vision that you have and where you want really to, uh, to go. Okay, so I would like to discuss with you and try to, um, uh, to, to, to share with you uh, the kind of role that scientists can also play in terms of technology transfer and I, I, I would like to do that uh, uh, through um, two real life examples. Of course, I can't say anything on this because it is everything is confidential. Uh, but uh, having said that, the bad news is that funding is really a critical ingredient uh, uh, in drug development. So I, I don't have really a solution for this. But uh, what I can I can say you and this is by really by experience is that uh, an early interaction with the technology transfer uh, office can really help scientists to define, uh, let's say, uh, the innovation value of your project, um, to define those critical steps uh, or critical gaps uh, that then uh, will be <laughs> fundamental uh, um, to, to solve and to achieve, uh, to uh, proceed in your, in your development, and also to define potential business models that then will be you know, the core that you will, together with the Technology Transfer Office, discuss uh, uh, with uh, uh, partners and investors. And uh, um, I think that this is relevant also when you are looking for um, non-profit grants, like the ones that are mentioned here. This is a, a project related to a therapy for rare eye diseases, and uh, um, it is conducted at TGEM, our Institute of Genetics and Medicine uh, in, in Naples. And of course, here Teleton was the first investor uh, in the project many, many years ago. Um, I think that uh, our interaction with the scientists here was very much important also to direct the scientists towards very specific funding that was sort of um, coherent with the uh, and sort of uh, ideal for the stage of development of the project. For instance, uh, uh, yesterday I think Jan Matai mentioned the POC grant. Uh, these are um, really um, small grants in terms of money, but are big grants in terms of setting the scene let's say, uh, of, the, of the technology and the product uh, for the uh, subsequent uh, discussions with uh, potential partners, industrial partners. And this grant, for instance, are really something that comes out of uh, an arms in arms work uh, between the scientists and the technology transfer offices. Uh, then also I would like to, to highlight the fact that it is important to manage IP since the beginning. 
um, in terms of your collaborations uh, in the consortia that you will be participating into. Um, also to have access to materials, to technology, and at the same time having always um, that um, freedom then to use your results. Um, of course, a use that is um, adapted to uh, the, the, the then future development of the, of the project. And then, of course, the other ingredients, I think, and I always have a problem here, okay. Um, we have discussed about patent. I think that intellectual property um, is something that, um, if discussed with the technology transfer officer, um, then becomes broader than the patent. There is now, but there are also tools that sometimes are really fundamental for the program. And these also are a big value uh, to be discussed with your future partners. And also, um, uh, really, it is very much important to uh, continue discussion with technology transfer officer because um, one of our tasks is also not only to patent, but also to define the best strategy. It might be a single patent, it might be a group of patents, it might be that many different embodiments then are in your, um, in your uh, program, in your plans, but not yet actually um, proved uh, in, in lab. And our task is really uh, to um, expand patent protection and to have the broader patent protection so that uh, those failure um, Alessandro mentioned are possible for you uh, without losing uh, then uh, you know the opportunity uh, of the value that a patent can really give to the project. Um, I also would like to stress the fact that papers uh, are a fundamental component, a fundamental ingredient of technology transfer. Um, Papers, in my opinion, are a sort of a seal of excellence. Papers are uh, those, um, you know, um, are those um, tools uh, that can help me uh, demonstrate also to the partners, potential partners, that the idea, the invention, the technology, and therefore also the project is something validated that key opinion leaders uh, agree that this is something valuable, that the scientific community also actually supports the invention. And this is very much important in terms of innovative, um, in, in innovative ideas. Um, so I think that, uh, as, as of course has already been explained, patent and uh, uh, papers are not enemies. Uh, I think that these are both uh, very important tools uh, for uh, the subsequent interactions with, uh, with potential uh, partners. Okay, so this is another example. Um, I think that here also um, uh, I would like to highlight funding, patent, papers, uh, as fundamental ingredient. Uh, this is a, a project uh, on therapy for rare bone diseases. Uh, it is conducted in, in academia and we have uh, a mandate um, to find industry investors, partners. Then in the real life, I have to say that we have worked a lot with this scientist also in terms of uh, setting academic collaborations, in terms of managing intellectual property. Again, here we have really worked hands in hands um, to um, uh, apply to a POC grant. Again, a very important step for the scientist to really um, uh, have awareness of the potential of its own, uh, own project. So, if I haven't yet okay. convinced you why management of IP is important, because IP simply is your results. So nothing more than your results. So I think that um, 
apart from the fact that your institution is or not the owner of the results, I think it is important for you uh, to be aware if you are really free to use the results, if you are really free to publish them, if you are really free to use them in collaboration with others or in collaboration with industrial partners. And our task is really to get the right degree of freedom, which is not a full freedom. Uh, so sometimes uh, the institution uh, is not the owner of the results, but at the same time we can really, together with you, uh, define uh, that degree of freedom, the degree of access that is uh, substantially um, enough for your project. And then we come to the more uh, appealing part, so uh, partnering uh, with, with uh, industry. So, uh, in my experience, partnerships uh, with industry, with investors, uh, um, is always a learning process. And this is because, uh, as yesterday uh, someone actually mentioned, two cultures somehow start to talk together, and there is really a cross-fertilization. And uh, this is, as Alessandro also mentioned before, both when uh, things are good and gone and when things are terminated. And this is something that happens. Um, for instance, in the case of this therapy for rare eye diseases, we are so happy in 2014 because we started an agreement with a Big Biotech. And actually, this was an option agreement, and actually in 2016, the company uh, opted in. So, enthusiasm. Um, unfortunately, um, I would say a couple of years after that, the company terminated everything. And this not because the project had failed, uh, it was not a technical issue, but simply because the company changed its uh, pipeline and the priorities were different and they were not more fitting with, uh, with our project. Um, was this a waste of time? I would say no. Uh, and not only because, of course, Teleton safeguarded the project in terms of money, <laughs> but also because the interaction be between the scientist and the company uh, and also the technology transfer office and all the people in Teleton was good enough uh, to help the scientists to look at uh, his technology in terms of products, uh, to look at his technology in terms of something that should be uh, feasible and should really go through all the clinical uh, steps um, in a timely and smoothly way. And uh, actually, this helped the scientists uh, to start, um, or let's say, to continue this, the, the, the research, uh, and we ended up with an alternative platform uh, that is actually uh, synergistic with the first one. And this important, this package of, uh, of results and IP actually has been the basis uh, uh, to start uh, um, a startup, uh, Avantgarde Bio, together with, with Sophie Nova thanks to the investment of, uh, of Sophie Nova. <clears throat> okay. um, another important point, uh, this is, uh, um, for instance, what happens uh, for this therapy for rare bone diseases, uh, is that technology transfer is something uh, that, uh, I mean, it, it's not a single action, a single uh, uh, interaction with a partner. Uh, usually it is a multi-interaction. Uh, you have to talk to uh, many, many uh, potential partners then to find the right one. And um, in this case, for instance, we had, we, we went through a number of uh, really diligence uh, um, assessments, uh, um, which is not actually the number of companies or investors uh, we, we, we talk with, but a specific, the ones that wanted to sort of have more details on the technology. And uh, 
um, this was, uh, again, a very important process for, for us, for the scientists, because we were able, uh, talking to all these, these um, in industry uh, people, to really define the gaps, uh, the main aspects uh, that were perceived as a big risk um, on the side uh, of the companies. And actually, we changed completely. Uh, the business model. So actually we wanted so much to create a company at the very beginning of the story, uh, but then we realized that the companies, that, that the, the ideal partner was not really an investor because the gaps had really to be covered uh, by other technologies. And, uh, and actually, the real company was not the one that was uh, that much interested in bone diseases, as we tried at first. But the real company, the good company, uh, could be a company that had the right technology. And actually, we ended up with a couple of important uh, agreements, uh, one more related to drug optimization and the, one, the other one uh, uh, related to um, to the delivery, and actually, they uh, this last company opted in in September two thousand and twenty-one. So let's see in two years uh, if something happens. Uh, but this is very very interesting case. Uh, um, so talking with uh, industrial partners, then you really understand uh, what is the right way um, really to bring a product uh, forward. So the big question, uh, okay, these slides, I think you already, you already you have already seen that um, from, uh, from Maria Grazia uh, Roncarolo. Um, so the answer to this question, I'm, I'm not um, reading the slides anymore, uh, but the answer of this question is yes, it is possible. Um, I think that um, uh, being on the side of academia, um, we need to take into consideration, to keep in mind um, a few pillars, uh, um, a few pillars that uh, and this is the rule of technology transfer here, um, that we have to fine tune according to the partners and according to the business model that we want to, to build. Um, so safeguarding research independence, of course, so uh, keeping the, opportunity, the possibility to continue research and continue innovation. Um, retain intellectual property rights, so that means uh, it is better uh, not to uh, assign uh, intellectual property rights, but to license them. And this is because, uh, as I was saying before, the partners can change uh, its pipeline. The partners can also fail, maybe, um, the, the development of the therapy. And in that case, uh, you are in the position of getting back, get, getting IP, everything back, uh, and try to start uh, um, again, maybe also with uh, more academic work. Um, partnership should provide enough funding if, of course, research is conducted at the, the, at the academia, at the institute. But also partnership should supply additional funding, of course, in terms of licensing fees, in terms of development, commercial milestones, and this is uh, the, the, to close the circle that have been, has been mentioned yesterday and to make really um, the, 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 the good part of this, uh, of this story and invest in more innovation. The, the last few slides, one point that I really would like to raise is that a scientist uh, should uh, actually contribute. Um, if not to the negotiation, uh, because then, uh, of course, we enter into technicalities, but it should really contribute to define the frame of the partnership. And this is because many of the uh, items that are mentioned here actually relates to your research 
and uh, not only to the um, background uh, and to what you have done in the past, but it relates to what you are going to do in the future. So all these items are very much important and um, it is very, very relevant. Uh, this continued dialogue that I mentioned uh, in the first, uh, uh, at the beginning of this, uh, of this talk. And I would like to close, uh, this is the sli last slide, okay. um, by mentioning one tool that can be, could be relevant when you want to um, strategically uh, define the next steps for your project. This is a guidebook that has actually been developed for Orphan Drug, but I think that um, many of the uh, aspects that are touched in this guidebook uh, actually can be uh, helpful uh, for the scientist uh, to define how to proceed in drug development and uh, actually describes this guidebook, describes uh, tools, incentives, uh, uh, the strategies also in terms of uh, regulatory strategies uh, um, that uh, can be helpful for the development of the project. But I would like to draw your attention on the first uh, first uh, part of this story, the start checklist. Um, I think that uh, the chapter that are mentioned in this start list, this, this is what the scientist should start thinking in uh, um, uh, initiating sort of a, a new project on a, a, a potential uh, therapeutic strategy. So stakeholder mapping, horizon scanning of what others are doing in your field, um, disease information, so how much uh, then uh, um, the, 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 your therapeutic approach will be actually feasible in terms of development. Uh, funding resources, because funding is different in different stages uh, of the life of your, of your project, uh, and target value profile, which is very much important. So the, the, the final message is let's uh, begin with the end in mind somehow. And in this, uh, in this journey, uh, for sure, uh, scientists and technology transfer officer can, can really, you know, um, help each other um, to really benefit uh, the, the development uh, of, of your drug and your project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna Maria. Um, the, the presentation, the talk is open to, to question or discussion. There's some question from the floor. Fabio. Thank you for uh, uh, telling us your experience, but I think it's uh, probably the most relevant I in terms of uh, uh, results and uh, of process too. But I would like to ask you if you apply such a process just to the, your institutes or have you been able to contaminate even, uh, I, don't, I would say, the academia where you fund research or the other institutions first? And second, which kind of relationship you mind about, uh, you know, new ventures in the field of technology transfer, such as the one we are thinking about? So, um, first of all, as, as you for sure know, uh, Teleton uh, grants, awards uh, grants also to, to academia in Italy. So it is really part of our mission also to act um, as a facilitator, I would say. So whereas for our institute, of course, we are the owner also of the results, the intellectual property, so we really act, uh, you know, uh, in, in strict collaboration with the institutes. Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, what we call extramural research, we have been uh, um, uh, playing more a facilitator um, rule, uh, which can be very much different case by case. So in some cases, we really have a mandate 
from the um, from the academia. In other cases, uh, we just uh, play a role uh, in uh, um, a sort of advisor uh, with the scientist, and also because there are really many technology transfer offices that are very much good and they are really able to, to progress. Of course, we have a specific expertise in genetic diseases, in rare diseases, and also we have sort of brand. And I think that this uh, very much helps also in the interaction with, uh, with partners. Um, I see that uh, actually in these last years, uh, um, you know, in, in Italy, a number of opportunities a number uh, of um, VCs, for instance, funds uh, are growing, and this is very much positive. I think that the, the, the real important point here is that to generate critical mass, uh, critical mass in terms of funding, and not only short, um, let's say, short time funding, but also long time funding, as Maria Grazia was. Uh, was actually mentioning in terms of expertise, um, uh, in terms of expertise also uh, in technology transfer activities, um, in terms uh, uh, I would say also and above all uh, of infrastructures because I think that infrastructures then can really make a difference in terms of the ability also of academia uh, to you know progress those path and reduce the risk, at least the, the risk that is perceived by the investors. So we have challenges ahead of us, but I think that all the, um, uh, I mean, uh, a number of elements are really moving in Italy. So we are here and we are uh, absolutely available to make this critical mass. Uh, let me briefly comment uh, one point that Ana Maria um, gave us before, the, which is the, the, the strategy, because the strategy uh, is a key point in, in my experience and is um, very, very well uh, present in the, the experience of, of Teleton. <coughs> in the, there are very few uh, research institutions which have this kind of strategy, in my, in my knowledge. Uh, I mean that, uh, and this is referred to the good money that I asked before, because good money uh, requires strategy. Um, uh, it, it's very important that uh, uh, research, in particular scientific research, or what we call basic research and so on, uh, is not finalized at the beginning to obtain results to be transferred. But it's very important that this happen working together in any case with technology transfer. So, Technology transfer is not something that happens if, after. It's something that should follow all the path. Because you cannot, uh, it's not possible to preview before. So if nothing happens, it's good research, we like it. But if something, it is possible to transfer, and you start after, you are late. So the researcher should always talk to the technology transfer without having the, the, the problem of uh, you need the results to transfer. No, this is not the point. The point is to work together because if, and very frequently this happens, if something can be transferred, you are ready to do that. And not to restart because you have made some wrong, some wrong uh, uh, point uh, at the beginning. So this strategy is, is very, very important. It's very rare in our research uh, uh, community. It's very rare. Yeah. So, uh, Please, if you comment, comment your yes, experience about that. To comment this, um, okay, first of all, regarding Peloton as an institution, this is very much true. And uh, um, you can see that because if we look at the kind of investment that we do, the amount of investment that we do in fundamental research or more uh, translational research, there is always a, a good half, 50% that is dedicated to fundamental research. So this is the institution. Uh, but I would like also to comment the fact that nowadays, uh, um, 
let's say also the scientific community in, 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 in general, each project um, has to uh, somehow look outside. So we scientists have to look outside its own uh, lab. The, the world is much more complex than this. And I think that technology transfer offices also can help the scientists to look outside uh, the lab to do real horizon scanning of what is happening. And this is also because, not only because there might be, let's say, a competitor outside, because I think that in this respect you are very much aware of that, but also because nowadays, uh, I mean, each project really needs a number of different technologies, a number of different competencies, a number of different tools. And in this sense, we are really a service uh, to the scientists. And you have to use us uh, to make your project, uh, you know, broader somehow, and to accelerate your project by accessing everything that you really need. So, thank you. So, other questions? So we can leave the, with the the sentence that complexity is not a problem; is the opportunity. Yeah. And uh, we are ready for uh, for lunch. Thank you, Ana Maria.